Unlike some Johnny Come Latelys to the issues, Bernie is the real thing. He's not about reading the polls and figuring out what he needs to say in order to get elected. He's about an unwavering commitment to basic justice, equality, and sound financial sense. I mean, the guy's been saying and doing the same stuff for the last 30 years. And that's reason enough to vote for him. All right, welcome back. Hour number two of the Steve Malsberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. That's actually Ben and Jerry. Not Tom and Jerry, you know, but Ben and Jerry, the ice cream guys. Um, and, and they were kicking off the campaign announcement, a big rally for Bernie Sanders. Uh, because he's running for president against Hillary, which is uh, a big fat yawn. But uh, nonetheless, it, it did happen. And I would never, ever buy Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> never in a million years, those left-wing lunatics, those pro-Palestinian Ben and Jerry's. Uh, you know, they got Jerry Garcia ice cream, which is fine if you want to glorify Jerry Garcia. I I'm waiting for the uh, Mahmoud Abbas flavor or the Yasser, the Yasser Arafat. I'm surprised. Very so. Or maybe, maybe pick a martyr and name an ice cream flavor after a martyr who killed Jews. Uh, you could eat it in the soccer stadium named after the same martyr. Uh, anyway, so, I, so Ben and Jerry, hey, Bernie, you could have them. You're three of a kind. You're peas in a pod. All right. Uh, we're going to be joined by Christopher Hahn, Democratic strategist, syndicated radio host in a second. But first, you and I and he and I and all of us are going to watch this and the seniority system and the federal government that promotes that seniority system and the unions as well they're not willing to talk about that so before a federal government or hillary clinton who by her own measures is not paying women equally in her own office nor is president obama before they lecture others maybe they ought to look into their own offices or look into the seniority system and the federal government Ah, there you go. All right, Christopher, welcome aboard. Good to see nice you, my to friend. See you. How you doing? Glad to have you in you know, studio. I had a nice pint of chocolate therapy <laughs> last night. You are missing out. <laughs> is that, Just is ignore that a the chocolate, politics. Chocolate therapy? It's fantastic. All right. It's really. Uh, good. You want to check your arteries when you get well, up? The I, show? Look, man, I ran ten miles. <laughs> I earned that chocolate therapy. It's okay. All right. So Carly Fiorina and Hillary Clinton were like this close today uh, at campaign stops, and um, you heard Carly Fiorina taking yeah. on Hillary because Hillary actually said today, you know what? What century are they living in? You know, equal pay right. when it's been shown that whether it's the Clinton Foundation or her time in the Senate, and certainly the Obama White House has even admitted that they don't pay women what they pay men because it's, I say, because it's a bogus issue. But if you're going to live by it, then you could die by it. And if they're going to criticize others for not doing it, shouldn't Hillary be doing it? Well, I think she should be. Uh, but I'll give, I'll give uh, Carly Fiorina credit here today. She's punching up. She's like the Buster Douglas of the Republican primary system right <laughs> Buster now. Buster Douglas. She is, she is punching up. I mean, look, Carly Fiorina is so low in the polls that, you know, for her to get as much press as she's been getting on all the networks and your show and all the radio shows today, this is what she did. This is why she did it. She's the only woman in the race. She wants to get on that Republican debate stage right, in August. Right. And she's she's making a play to do it. And yeah, look, uh, Hillary's admitted it. Uh, the president has admitted it. There's some seniority well, I don't issues. I that, that Hillary's have, admitted uh, it. You know, there, there, are, yeah. there are issues of, of, of pay... Uh, uh, inequality still in government. But Hillary, uh, to her credit, has promoted many women. All of her Senate staff, top players, were all women. All of the top, many of the top players in the State Department were women. I think she's done a great job at pushing but, uh, women's but e she, but equality she issues. In, when she in her Senate office, women made like, I don't know, 60s. Uh, it, I, I mean, I got it right yeah, here. I could look. Her, her but, top staffers in her Senate office. Look, I worked with her. I 72 with cents on every dollar she paid men while she was in the Senate. Not 72 true. cents. Absolutely not, not true. true. No, I, 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 true. not true. That it, that's a bogus report. I worked with her when she was and in the Senate. And you saw all the women's all paychecks. All of the top people in her office, her chief of staff, her, her communications director, all of the top people were women. So there's no way that that statistic can be that, accurate. That, that, I think it's just it, not accurate. It's, it's accurate in spite of that. No, I, I don't know where she got it every from. Woman, the top women made it, might have made more than men. I, I, 70, it's a, she didn't say 70. I'm going to tell your viewers where they can go to look for this. this look is, this up. Go to legislorm.com. Okay. All those salaries there. You look it up. You see for yourself. All right. And You'll also, see that that's and a also the Clinton. It's not a bogus. And also the Clinton administration. Well, you say she admitted it. Also, the Clinton Foundation. Um, the top like eight earners were, are men, and uh, and women make less than men. There, yeah, they so, got a long way to go there. Well, so then she shouldn't be going around at a campaign I, I, stop I, saying what century are I, the people who don't pay women equal living in. I think in. that's absolutely true, though. I think it's a good thing. It's a it's a good point, and I think that there are some there's some institutional hurdles that need to be overcome in big organizations like the State Department. All right, we find so. out that um, uh, now from uh, a story that is out, 
and I keep getting the name wrong, at, at the um, uh, IB Times, okay, that the Clinton Foundation donors, these are states, mm. countries, yes. that contributed to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, for instance, uh, let, me, let, me, um, let, let me tell you what it says here. Under Hillary Clinton, the State Department approved $165 billion worth of commercial arms sales to 20 nations whose governments had given millions to the Clinton Foundation. Mm. Uh, under Hillary Clinton, the State Department approved 165 Well, okay, it goes yeah. on and on. One in particular, Algeria. Algeria in 2010, Hillary Clinton State Department, Human Rights Watch, just blasted them. Right. Uh, no freedom of expression, free, no freedom of speech, corruption, this and that. A year later, they give $500 million to the Clinton Foundation. 500 Founda million? Uh, 500,000, whatever, right. to the Clinton State right. uh, Foundation. And lo and behold, they don't just get weapons. They get chemical weapons, biological weapons, poison gas coincidence i know there's no proof you can't find the document that said i will right. do this if you give me but it goes on and on and on and on and it stinks well you know it's funny i've had a lot of conversations about the clinton foundation the last couple of weeks and i think i'll have a lot more between now and 2016. i, I don't see a small donation like five hundred thousand dollars influencing anyone over there that is a huge foundation that raises billions of dollars and five hundred thousand, just like the seventy-five thousand dollars that uh, Stephanopoulos gave, these are, are, are ridiculously small amounts of money. I don't see any link here. I mean, you talk about the Saudi deal. I mean, that deal was in the works when President Bush was in office. I'm sure that this deal was begun, had begun under under the Bush administration as well. These deals take a long time to be fulfilled, and I don't believe that the, that that uh, Secretary Clinton uh, had a, had any quid pro quo with these uh, donations. The Clinton Foundation, quite frankly, does great work around the world. I'm very proud of it, and we should all be proud of the what Clinton they do. Foundation. According to the uh, group, which just followed me on Twitter today, as a matter of fact, they follow me on Twitter. The, the group they did? No, I hope they do. Oh, oh, oh at no, Christopher no, no, Hahn, no, I need more followers. This is a group I don't have. Right, <laughs> the group that 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 monitors charities and yep. does it professionally has found that the Clinton Foundation gives about ten percent of the money that they take in to the people that need it. The rest goes to expenses and salaries, and it's the Clinton. So God knows where it is goes. Is it Charity Navigator? Because Charity, yes, Navi Charity, Charity Navigator, Navigator is a a, a, a a good organization. Uh, I'm going to read that report. Yeah. I'll, oh, it absolutely. We'll Absolutely. Next time I come back, Absolutely. We'll dissect it. All right. So another judge yesterday, well, actually, the court, court of appeals yesterday right. says that uh, Obama's uh, executive order on immigration should be stayed because it's unconstitutional, and they agreed with the uh, the uh, lower court judge. Right. And uh, now I guess they'll appeal it to a higher. But uh, Washington Post, President Obama's legacy increasingly in legal jeopardy. Yeah. Not only for the outstanding cases he has still out there, which include you know gay marriage, climate change, etc., and and of course Obamacare. Right. And this one on immigration, which Hillary, by the way said this executive order, which two courts have said is illegal, said she said it didn't go far enough, which would be a big red flag. But I think 12 times the Justice Department has lost in the Supreme Court under Obama, Obama's Justice Department, nine nothing. I mean, this is a horrendous record by an administration that is just out of control with power and drunk on power, and the courts keep reining them in. Well, the Supreme Court upheld Obamacare. I think they'll do it again. Okay. Now, well, even if they even, the even if they do strike down the provision where uh, you could buy into the federal exchanges mm -hmm. in, in the, the states. states that are not, uh, that's going to put more pressure on those states to actually create exchanges because there are there are many of these states, especially Texas and some other bigger states. There's a critical mass of people. I mean, who that's are now not getting, the issue. Okay. Well, look, what you said about the, the variety of the immigration, I agree with with Secretary Clinton. It doesn't go far enough. I think that Congress should pass a law to make it go far. But, but, but you but, can't say as president, well, Congress won't do it, so I'm going to do it. And that and the courts say, you can't. It's unconstitutional. Legal scholars like uh, like uh, Jonathan Turley, who's voted for Obama twice, right. said this is outrageous. This is what the, he said this is what the founders feared. Well, we'll see what the court says. They but said so far, it twice look, so, so far, far. So far, he's not winning in those courts, but we'll see what the courts say. And that, we'll see how it gets dissected as and it, and it gets nuanced as it moves up the chain into the Supreme Court. I don't think that everything he did is going to stand. I, I agree. But I do think that a majority of what he's doing is enforceable because, let's face it, when you're near the executive, you have uh, vast power in how you enforce laws and how you prioritize what gets enforced. And that's what he's doing though, over here. But you can't no, make you can't laws make laws. That's laws, right. But yeah. you can prioritize enforcement because you have limited resources right. to do it. And if Congress isn't going to give him full resources to do full enforcement, he's got to prioritize it. All right. Always good Always to see fun. Christopher Hahn and listen to him on his uh, syndicated radio show as well. Up next, Vanderbilt Law School professor Dr. Carol Swain. Don't go away.